For our last application, we are going to measure the distance across rivers without actually crossing the river. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to set up a point across the river that we're going to look at like a tree or something. That's probably what a surveyor would use, a tree or a pole. Or if they're really trying to be precise, they could actually have a person over there, but then they'd be crossing the river. Okay, so you set up a point across the river and you say, okay, where do I want my bridge to be? Well, I'm going to put my my end of my bridge here at point B. Then you need another point along the same line. We're going to create overlapping triangles and I'll call it point C. It can be further out if you like. It can be closer in, but in this case I have it here. Then I can pick any path out here and because, but the main thing is, is that this base here must be parallel to this base. Otherwise, my triangles will not be similar. Why is that? Well, angle A for the little triangle here is the same as angle A for the big triangle. And if these two are parallel, then I can say angle ABE is the same as angle BCD. Well, if I have two angles in the triangle is already congruent, then the third angle has to be congruent. Okay, if all three angles are congruent, the triangles are proportional. They're similar. And that means the sides are proportional. In fact, you can see that my proportions are generating uh, the same ratios. The interesting thing is you notice I have 2.37 plus 4.03. That's because you need to make sure to use the whole sides of the triangles. And again, this works for anywhere. Let's say I say, oh, I don't want my river crossing there. I want it crossing here. And I'm going to change my siding point here and put it there. And I have my parallel segment uh, there. The ratios are still going to be the same. They're different than what I had before, but they're the same compared to the two similar triangles. Okay, so the main thing to remember, these are trickier problems. Because the triangles overlap, you have to be sure to use the whole side for the larger triangle, including the part that crosses the river and the part on dry land. So what does that mean? It really the best way to get these problems, there, there are two tricky parts, one part in the algebra and the other part in the setup, which is right now. If you really want to get these problems right, you're going to draw two separate triangles. So what I'm going to do is take this overlapping triangle part and separate it see how that triangle came from there. So I have the big triangle, which I can clearly see, and the smaller triangle. Well, the small triangle is pretty easy to label. I can just take the 2.15 and the 3. The larger triangle is actually a little trickier because I have to add the 2.15 to the 3.65 to get the total length there. The 8.1 is pretty easy. That just comes from the base there. So to solve problems involving uh, the overlapping triangles, be sure to use the whole sides. And you're going to set up your proportion where you have um, kind of the small triangle, we'll call it triangle one, over the large triangle, triangle two. And for the large triangle, remember it's river width plus distance to point C. For the small triangle, just the river width is the whole side. So let's take a look at an example. And this says use diagram at right. I know I moved the diagram here on my uh, PowerPoint. And I want to measure this distance from A to B to the nearest hundredth of a meter. Okay, so first of all, really go ahead, draw two separate triangles. All right. Take the label the small one, that one's pretty easy, X and 3. Then label the large triangle. The easy part is 12. The hard part is this side. It's not x and it's not 7.5. Now I've seen students try to go 7.5 times x. Well, you're, if you're saying x is 2, that would imply the whole thing is 15. It's not times, it's plus. It's this distance plus that distance is the whole. So in this case, it's x plus 7.5, which yes, that makes your ratio a little less pretty. x is to 3 as x plus 7.5 is to 12. You're going to cross multiply, and here's the other tricky part. When you cross multiply, that 3 is going to be multiplying both the terms in the numerator. So you're going to have to use a distributive property. 
12x equals 3x plus 22.5. Then you can subtract the 3x from both sides. You get 9x equals 22.5. And then divide by the coefficient. And that leaves you with x is 2.5. And that should be kilometers, not meters. So to reflect, why doesn't the proportion 2.15 over 3 equal 3.65 over 8 one work for the river? So hopefully you should be able to answer that question looking at that uh, at the triangles. Make sure to separate them. And how were we able to measure distances and lengths when they can't be measured? We used three different methods and there are actually a couple more.